Okay, so everyone, please welcome Joe Sparadin. I'm so excited to talk to you today about a subject that's really near and dear to both of our hearts. Hello, Joe. How are you, Jim? I'm good. I'm so glad to see you. Too, yeah. So uh, tell me, you know, you reached out to me after my last, my last podcast about men specifically. Kind of tell me what was on your mind. We've talked about this a little bit. But tell tell us what was on your mind when you listened to that. Yeah, I uh, I, I loved hearing that podcast. Um, and as you talked about it, you talked about uh, you you referenced that it was a discussion that was going to need further exploration. And and men's work is something that's been really important to me for a long time. And so I I I needed to just put that out there that if if you wanted to discuss it further, I would love to be someone that was part of that discussion with you. Um, I've been involved in men's work here in Utah, and then just you know in the larger space as well. But here in Utah, pretty specifically, for the last year and a half, and uh, have had some really cool experiences and observations that I'd love to share. Yeah, I love that. So you and I worked together for a little while. We coached together and you were able to share some of your history with me. And that was so beautiful to see into, into your world. You know, people look at you and they go, wow, you're such a big, strong man. You, you, uh, you conquer the world and behind those walls is, um, you know, a gentle, compassionate, person who has really experienced some pain. And that's what I love so much about coaching with people is the world sees a certain picture of someone, you know, that, that saying, don't judge a book by its cover, because really behind it, what's really behind those walls is so much more and so deep and so uh, profound. And so kind of give us an idea, give other people an idea of your story and how you even got into this work. Yeah. Um, so for myself, as, as cliche as it might sound, in, in 2020, I kind of found myself in this place of midlife crisis, faith crisis, existential crisis, COVID crisis, just all kind of wrapped up together. And, um, you know, I, I'd done some, some inner work, I guess you could call it, and, and felt like I was relatively engaged emotionally, mentally, spiritually, internally. Um, but as a lot of these things started coming up for me, uh, I was thrown into panic and anxiety and a lot of fear. And to your point, I'm 6'7", I weigh about 275. And, you know, following the stereotypical masculine, I'm supposed to be big and strong and not feel any of those things. So I was introduced to a group called Sacred Sons. And they, I, I signed up for one of their events. It was very uncomfortable to do it. Uh, but the, the discomfort of my life as it was, was more uncomfortable than the, the prospect of, of change and stepping out of that comfort zone. So as I uh, joined one of their events, it was life-changing for me. And I, I went to California with them and I'm telling myself this story while I'm there, like I don't fit the, the demographic of these men, right? Like I'm middle-aged, I'm white, I'm Christian, I'm heterosexual, I, I have a 401k, I've got four kids, you know, all these things. And so I immediately was already kind of building a wall between myself and these other men. And then come to find out that they had all the same fears and all the same anxieties and all the same pain and sadness. And it was amazing. I wasn't alone. And just knowing that I wasn't alone was already this amazing medicine to connect with other men in that way. And from there, I just, I was really lit up about what that had done for me and felt the, the need to bring it back here to Utah and with, with Sacred Sons and in other ways to, to share this with other men. And that's, that's what I've been doing ever since. Hmm. Love it. I love what you said 
because it's such a core part of what I see over and over and over again. And that is at the core, we're all the same. We're all the same, right? All the labels, all the things we put, we put, we take on day after day, month after month, year after year. And then we, we get to be an adult and we're like, oh, this is who I am. And at the end of the day, it's all BS. You know, we're all the same. And that's why when I wanted to have a, start having this conversation, you know, for me to be like a woman and go, I know what men need. I realize I don't know what it's like to be a man in this life. I don't know what people's belief systems are, whether they believe we live multiple lives in another dimension, play different parts. I believe that we, we play all different parts, whether it's in this dimension or another one. But um, so, no, I don't know what it's like to be a man in this life. I don't. But I, I realize that I am that, uh, I know that it is my, it's becoming really clear to me that this is a message that I am to be involved in and a, and a conversation I am to be involved in. And, um, and so I love that you reached out to me and that you're here in front of me. And we're having this, this talk because I think that it's so important. And when you look at the rates of suffering, of suicide, of cutting, of, you know, all of the different things going on in our society, it's, it's not going away. It's getting more, um, it's getting bigger. And why is that? I think it's so important to ask that question because it's getting bigger. And as a, as a teacher of the law of attraction and a, a believer and a student of that, um, that's something that a lot of people don't ever talk about is, you know, these, these deep issues. But to me, I, I, I believe that we need to be more in the middle of like, not just in la la land or not hard data. We need to be in the middle We're we're magic in a human body. And so what can we do about these things? So in your own experience and in your teachings and the things that you've learned with your work with Sacred Sons, what have you learned? What, what do you feel like men need? And I want to talk to it as I want, I want two components here. So I know I'm throwing a lot at you, Joe. But first, I want to know as a mother, for all the moms listening and the dads, Okay. As a parent of a son, what do you feel like um, is really needed right now? In let's start there. Let's start there. And then I want to hop to the husbands as a, as an adult, what do they need to, um, because a lot of, a lot of adults, we know that youth are suffering, but also a lot of adults, like when you look at the suicide rates, they are really high in adolescence but also adult men, like primarily in their 20s. You, you probably know even more as far as the, the um, details on that, but talk to us as moms and as parents out there, dads too. Yeah, that's, that's wonderful. And you know, first I'll say, Jen, not being a man yourself, uh, as I got done with Sacred Sons, I still felt and identified this need to connect with you. And, and really one of the first things you did was you just asked me questions because I didn't even know what I needed. I, you, you led me through some guided meditations. You gave me some tools to really tap into myself because I believe that at our core, every one of us already kind of knows what we need and what we are. Um, the world is kind of designed to practice. And I'm the father of four. I have three sons and a daughter. Uh, they range from 11 to 17 years old. And this, this is something that's really important to me as well, right? Um, so my first point would be the world is distracting our children and we play into it. I played into it with cell phones, with iPads, with TVs, um, with music and, and so many of these other things where at, at really no point in time do our children ever have even 10 minutes where they're in silence, where they're just alone with their thoughts? I remember with my daughter, 
uh, challenging her to go to bed without listening to music. And she was terrified <laughs> at that point because she didn't want to just have to think and, and be alone with her thoughts. But then as she does that, as we all do that, uh, something really miraculous happens because we connect in to ourselves. And so as a, as a father, one of the first things that I've done for my children is just allowed them, initially probably requiring them to have some time in silence mm -hmm. and to really just tap into their own hearts, to their own minds, and then created a, a safe space for them to share what it is they're feeling, what it is they're thinking. And, and oftentimes as a father in the past, as one of my children were maybe struggling with anxiety or some of those things, I would say, oh, well, let's put on the show for you and I'll get you some ice cream. And I would totally like enable the numbing of, of any of those feelings, right? Yeah. Now I, I'm, hey, I'm here with you, feel it, mm -hmm. right? And let's talk about it. Let's talk about what that's bringing up. Because really what I feel that is, is a call to expansion, right? A call to more. Um, for my son specifically, the way that I was raised, I'm 41. And the way that I was raised, and, and, and no fault specifically to my parents, I believe it was more just society. And we're seeing this less, but it still happens. Boys don't cry, right? If you're sad you just kind of like shove that down yeah if you're if you're afraid well you you can't show that right you can't talk about it um if you have questions if you don't understand things you, you have to just pretend that you've got it all together and you, you don't wear pink you don't you know hug your your friends that are other guys you know, all these things you know all just these things that we were kind of raised with or at least i was raised with and I've given my sons permission to feel, right? Just permission to feel bad and to express that without shame, to cry, right? I'm, I'm sad or I'm hurt or I'm scared. And because what happens is men specifically, we feel those things and we repress those feelings and we shove them down and they have to come out somehow. They just do. And so my experience has been with myself and with others, those comes out in the form of addiction, uh, in the form of abuse, uh, in just a lot of misalignments that can happen in our lives because we're not, uh, you know, demonstrating, expressing emotion, feeling, thought, and that's really detrimental. So as a mother or a father, the first thing I think you can do for your children is ask them how they're doing. And they're going to say, I'm fine. And you just let them be in silence. What does that mean? You know, I don't know. It's good. Okay. And, and now my children are at a point where, hey, dad, I'm, I'm really feeling a lot of anxiety. And they already know that I'm going to, well, have you sat with that? You know, what is that? What is that coming from? What's the source of that? And they'll come in, well, it's coming from, you know, this aspect of my life or this friendship or this thing in school. All right, so what, what can we do about that? How can we, you know, realign there? And so for myself, it's been huge as a father to just give my children space and permission to feel all of their emotions. And that feeling all of their emotions doesn't make them any less of a man or a woman or female or male. They just get to express and feel those things. I love that. That's so true. So true. And you, you make such a good point when you say that they, we live in a world of distraction. And I love how you talked about 2020 because, and all these things started happening. 2020 is the year of perfect vision, right? It's like, we got to start to see, and it really was an awakening. And it was the beginning of a big awakening for people. I know my coaching practice was floodgates were open. People were needing a lot of, of uh, guidance and they're continuing that, but distraction and you hit on such a, such a, a subject for me that I'm very passionate about. And that is electronics. It's, it's like 
don't think about what's bothering you. Don't think about, you know, your anxiety and what is the root cause when you're like, just sit with it. What is it? Is it a friend? Is it, you know, is it something you're, you're concerned about, you're thinking about? So true, just to sit. It's such simple advice, but so profound. Right. On, on a larger scale for all of us, I mean, for our children, but really for everyone, I, I believe part of that distraction is to keep us focused on things that we can't change or that we don't necessarily have influence over, right? Like personally, as, as tragic as it is, the war in Ukraine, I have very little influence over what's going on there, right? Um, but that is what is, is in my face all the time. Yep. Uh, inflation, COVID, all, all the things that are there, there's very little that I can do about that. So what do I have influence over? Me, my, my family, kind of, right? Yeah. My community. But it, we're, we're focused on things that are so far away from ourselves. And the reality is if we would just focus on uh, lifting where we stand, just being where we are and, and having influence there, uh, that is what changes the world mm -hmm. because that becomes exponential mm -hmm. growth. Yeah. So that makes me think about, you know, how they call that the movie about the law of attraction, the secret. Have you seen it? Uh huh. The secret. Why do they call it the secret, Joe? Do you uh, know why they call it the secret? That's a great question. Okay, so the reason they call it the secret is because if you know, if you know that that you're so powerful, and if you start to focus on, like you mentioned, the things that you have power over which is within your four walls. And I love how you said kind of when it comes to your family, you're right. Kind of you have, you have control, but you do have a lot of influence over your children and your, your, your bubble. But we have so much power over our own peace, our own joy, our, how much we laugh. And the more we turn our light on one by one, one by one, right? That's how the world heals. Just like you said, 100%. But if we are fat, sick, and nearly dead and distracted, right, with pills and media and all the, all the stuff, ice cream, like you said, right, um, then, then we, don't, we don't know how powerful we are. And so it's a secret because in, in that movie, actually, that movie came out in 2000, I think, five, six is when I saw it. And they talk about it being a secret because if you know your power, you are no longer controlled. So like all the consumerism, the debt, and all of the things that cause us misery in life would be, it would change. It would change the world. And those, those people that, um, you know, the 1% that has so much money and power, they wouldn't have the money and power anymore because we would we would change profound like deeply our whole world would change absolutely and i believe that it is uh you know any any exponential growth starts slowly you i you probably heard the example sometimes where they they talk about if i give you one penny today and two pennies tomorrow and four pennies the next day you know after a week you've got like two bucks but after a month you've got like five hundred thousand. You know, so it, it's going to feel slow. It's going to start slow at first, but then the, the exponential growth is, is really what's exciting and what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, okay. So now let's shift gears and let's talk to all, talk to all of us wives out there, Joe, what do we need to hear? How can we support our men? How can we support our husbands and, um, and don't worry, ladies, I'm also talking to you about how, you know, I'm talking to men about how they can support you too. I got your back too. But this is something that, that we don't hear a lot as far as um, what men need and how we can support them. We expect men to just be strong. Just get out there and conquer the world and just, you don't have feelings. You're a man, you don't have feelings, right? And um, the whole Me Too movement, 
I've, I've spoke publicly about my feelings about the Me Too movement. I have a bone to pick with it. I think there's some really good things about it, but, and as the mom of, you know, daughters, I love it in the sense of, yeah, you know, we don't want them to be sexually, we don't want women to be sexually harassed and we want things to, certain things to not be acceptable in society, 100%. Uh, but on the flip side of that, I feel like the pendulum kind of swung to like hating men to some degree for a minute. And some people are still there. And uh, so, you know, speak to us women. What can we do as wives to, to really be there for, for our husbands and to bring down those walls and get closer with our husbands? Right. Um, you know, those, those are great questions. I think, you know, what's interesting is, is stereotypically, again, you hear women talk about wanting a man that is sensitive, uh, but no one wants a man that is emotional. Um, you know, what is the difference there? I think sensitivity speaks to our awareness of our emotions. Uh, emotional generally means the emotions have control over you know, how we're acting or what we're doing. And, and sensitive to me doesn't just mean like, oh, hey, I, I can cry at a, a sad movie. It means I am sensitive to the entire range of my emotional state. So that if I'm irritable, if I'm insecure, if I'm really happy, whatever it might be, that I am self-aware in those emotions. And, but that I have command over those emotions. Uh, so my observation has been, Within all of us, we have masculine and feminine traits and qualities and energies. Uh, as you spoke, I, you know, everybody's going to have different beliefs, and regardless of what your is, I am masculine. I am in, in this life as a, a masculine male, and for me, that comes with uh, commitments and responsibilities. My, my job is, as the male, as masculine, is to hold space. For, for other, for women, whether that's a, a partner or a child or a friend or, you know, whoever it might be. And I don't believe that a, a wife's or a, again, a partner, whoever their job is to hold space for men. Um, where I have found the, the healing and, and space being held for me is in men's groups, is with other men where I get together with other men and we talk about real life. We don't talk about beer and sex and football. Um, we talk about stress. We talk about anxiety. We talk about, we celebrate our victories too, of course. But when I'm with this group of other men, I get to be irrational. I get to be emotional. And they contain that. They hold that in a container and then as I let that out and I, you know, I get to go play a victim and, and all of these things and they'll, okay, yeah, good Joe, we love you, you're okay. And then it's time for me to come back out and, and fulfill my role as a man to, to then hold space for others and to be that, that structure, the, the banks to the river, right? And so as women, what, what can wives and girlfriends and, and mothers do? Uh, encourage your men to find connection with other men. Encourage them to go be real with other men. Um, a year and a half ago, I started doing men's groups here in Utah. And when I started that, there were, there were some times when it was just me. I, I put it out there, I'd promote it, and it was just me. And sometimes I'd get two guys, sometimes I'd get four. Uh, I did one this week in Draper, and we had close to 60. And that was amazing for me. Mm. And, and no one man there has like all the wisdom and the medicine for the other men. The medicine is in the connection, right? It is in the brotherhood. And a lot of men said like, I'm here. My, my wife told me that I should come here. And so that's why I'm here, right? And, and whether that should be the case or not, God bless those women for for saying that, for expressing that. One of the men was, was sharing that he was, had anxiety about it. 
Uh, a lot of men have shared that. And what his spouse said to him was, do it afraid. Go anyway. Mm. Right? Go there anyway. And I love that. Um, so in encouraging your men to find a group of men to share with, to be vulnerable with, is, is paramount. And it's something that we've lost in society that I believe existed more. As, as you look at different cultures and different civilizations, there were absolutely times where men would go off together. And in that time, maybe they were hunting, maybe they were bowling, maybe they were at the barber shop, you know, whatever it was, um, but they were together and they could express, they could emote. And that allowed them then to, to go back to their tribe, to their home, to their family and, and hold space there for their spouse, for their children, for their community. So I think that's probably the biggest thing is encouraging the men in your life to find a group of men that they trust and that they can go talk with and, and be with. Yeah. So, okay. So you said something, well, there's, there's so many things there. So first off, uh, we know that men's qual or their, their lifespan is less than women. Okay, their life, men, men, it's a fact that men die before women, not all, but, but when we look at the, the numbers, then the average lifespan for men is young, is less than women. Why is that? Well, I think that you just cracked something open big time. And that is the connection and letting it out, you know, it has to get let out somewhere. And and I've studied a lot about energy and trapped emotions within the body. And we get these emotions and we, if we don't let them go, if we don't release them, then they, we, we love them around our whole life. And eventually they will wreak havoc on our, our body, our physical body. And a lot of men, you know, have heart attacks, high blood pressure, all of those things that, that are pent up in there. And so just having conversations, just that connection, just having a, a place to speak, a safe place is so big, so big. And it's not even like, it's so interesting to me how we make life so complicated. You know, it's like, oh, you know, I've got all this high blood pressure. What do I do? Let's go to this let's go take all these pills and let's go to, okay, now I have this other ailment. Let's go to all these specialists and all these things. What if you just needed to take off your freaking shoes, put your feet in the grass and have a conversation and eat some healthy food and, and laugh and like get back to simple and healthy practices. But you talking about, you know, being in the barbershop or going hunting and these things that, that, were part of our our history and what what used to happen i've noticed over the years and i in fact i remember my girlfriends and i joking about because we would get together the the wives and the husbands and the the men would be there and you could hear their conversations and then you could hear our conversations and i because i've always been an observer of human behavior i've always been intrigued by it and I remember noticing literally in my 20s that men would talk about, like you said, beer, sports, cars, and um, work. They'd talk shop. What do you do? Well, what do you do, right? And then the women are talking about issues with their kids and things that, you know, talking about their relationships and talking about more vulnerable things i think more more so is what what the the base of that is and so somehow we became we, we created this persona that men that they don't connect right but then then when we get married immediately there's an expectation of okay bring down all your walls and connect with me as a wife and tell me your deepest, darkest, you know, desires and what's on your, on your mind and in your heart. And we don't understand how they can't do it and how they're angry or upset with us. 
and it's it's really interesting. I I am married to someone who is very he's a very rare man. I see Danny connect with people like no other. He he puts his arms around people. He tells men men women it doesn't matter that he loves them all the time. He's a very he he connects. He has a very big gift to be able to connect with people and um doesn't mean that we understood each other by any means. We have been on a journey and it's taken many years for us to understand each other but you said something really interesting you said you don't believe it's the space or the the role of a wife to be there to hold space for her husband ever is that does that mean just so, in general or what do you think yeah i don't i don't mean that men shouldn't share their emotions or their thoughts or their feelings with with their spouse absolutely they should that is necessary um what what my experience has been and and what i've told myself is it's not fair that i have to do this and my wife gets to do this right and she should have to do for me the same things that that i do for her right? Um, the reality is there are different roles within masculinity and femininity. Mm -hmm. Equal does not mean same, right? And we have natural inclinations uh, just from even an evolutionary perspective, uh, the inclinations of women to be more of a, a caretaker or a caregiver and uh, masculine to be a provider right, to go out and, and do those things. Like that That has been part of our, our story as, as people for millennia. Um, so should men not speak with their wives about what they're feeling? No, absolutely they should. Um, and in being sensitive to my emotions, I can speak to them, right? I can come home and say, I'm, I'm really having a hard time today. I'm really overwhelmed. And I it would really help me if today I can just not do anything and just sit and like relax for the next two hours, right? To be able to speak to that is really important. And does a, a wife hold space for a man as he says something like that? You could probably call it that. But for me, it's more the, uh, the expression of the, the bigger emotions um, as, as those come out that I, I just, I believe that that is necessary for men to do in these spaces with other men. And it's, it's been miraculous and wonderful for me to witness and to be a part of that because then I can show up as a better husband, as a better father, as a better provider in, in these different ways. So yeah, I, I don't mean to say like, hey, don't worry about it. I got it. I talked to men about this. Don't worry about my emotions or anything. No, not, not that at all. Uh, be sensitive to your emotions and speak to them. But as you need to process them, as it gets maybe overwhelming or too much, uh, I believe that, that that is where that should happen. Yeah. Which, makes yeah. Maybe you're going to be a little controversial. It's going to be a little different. But I believe as men do that, it allows women to step more into their femininity and more into their flow and more into their creation. And when they know that they are in that space, that they are safe to be in that space, uh, the things that they're able to create and manifest are, are, are not stifled at all. Mm -hmm. So the, there, this is so, I just thought of something really big while you were saying that. And as hard as this is for us to hear as women, one of the reasons I get what you're saying and I get why it's so important for men to have a safe space to speak about things going on in their lives, because guess what? Many of the things they need to be heard about or they have frustration with is many times their wives. I hate to say it, ladies, but it's true. Intimate relationships are really, really hard. They're really tough. And what do women talk about um, when they go and talk to their sisters, their girlfriends, their moms? Many times they're getting advice on their, their relationships. 
which I also have my own opinion about can be very damaging, can be very, very toxic and damaging. It's not always a good thing, but, um, but being able to, as a man, have a safe space of getting, you know, like saying, Hey, look, this is happening with my, my marriage. What do I do? Even just getting some sound advice, some, you know, have, have that sounding board. I, I think it's, I mean, how do you talk to your wife? I, I think it's important to talk to your wife and your husband about if you're having issues in your relationship, it's important to talk to your spouse. Absolutely. That's the number one place to go. But there's also a place to have sound advice. But that to me is the key. If you're, if you're going and just talking to your bros about your wife, you can get, you can go down a really dangerous road. And it's the same thing with women. I always talk to, to my coaching clients about this, that it's really important that you talk, you, you know who you're talking to about your relationship. You want someone who is going to give you good advice because they could cause a lot of damage. Yeah. And my experience has been like, and by no means am I saying like, you need to go in these spaces and this is where you get to just like complain and she's doing this and she doesn't understand this. And I'm here. Like, I, I don't think it's that at all. What I think happens is when I've stepped into these groups and I speak around um, my life and what's going on and maybe a frustration that I have, what they, they do is they don't necessarily give me advice. They, they help me go back into myself. If I say my, my spouse is being so controlling or being so this, they're going to help me get her into why I have that perspective. And if that's a, a mother wound that might exist within me already, right? Or maybe there's a previous relationship that I've had that I'm bringing something else into. So then when I go to my partner and I say, hey, this is what's coming up for me. And it's not your fault. I'm not here to blame you. You don't need to change everything about yourself. I want to speak to this. Um, and really, it, it allows me to be radically accountable for my life. And so I believe marriages get better and relationships get better at any level as we become more self-aware. Because the reality of it is 95% of the things that we might project onto somebody else and say, you're making me feel X, right? Or you triggered me. to. Do they didn't trigger you. They revealed something that was already inside of you. So when you go do this deeper work, you identify what's already inside of you. You know where it comes from. And then all of a sudden, like, oh, this, this isn't my spouse. This is something maybe I've been projecting on her, you know, for, for a decade because of something that happened to me when I was 12 years old. You know, so it, it really just, for me, it comes down to that level of self-awareness. So I, I don't go give people marriage advice. I don't tell men like, all right, here's what you need to do. And here's how you need to put her in her place. And here's yes. how you, right. It, it's yeah. not that it's why are you feeling these things? What's going on inside you to feel this? And can you own that? And what really could you influence? It, it's back to that thing of influence, right? What can I control? What can I have command over me? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's so good because, because to that point, point of it being dangerous before when I said it could be dangerous and that's a like a real world word like it is dangerous for people to go and talk about their relationship to other people to assume so I love how you just said that you you don't give advice you just have them go within and see what what is it that's going on inside right um but with that you you said a word that I want you to explain to people because it's, it's really important. Mother wound. Explain to people what you mean by that. What is the mother wound? So for, for each one of us, uh, if we were fortunate enough, we were raised by a mother and by a father, right? Um, or just by, by two parents. You know, we were, we were raised by, by two parents that showed up that cared for us, that, that loved us. I'll speak to myself, right? Uh, I had a mother and a father and I'm the oldest of six children. They were married very young. 
and they did their absolute best. They showed up for me and they loved me and they tried to provide for me and they didn't do it perfectly. They brought in their own wounds. They brought in the way they were raised. They brought in their own insecurities and their own egos and their own imperfections. And as they brought those in, uh, as a, as a child, I attached my value to some of the things they brought in. So as I'm the oldest of six children and my parents are saying, Joey, we don't know how we do it without you. You know, you, you help so much with your siblings and you help so much here and you're so smart and you're so wonderful here and you provide so much for us and for these people. And so as a young nine-year-old child, well, my value starts to be attached to what I'm doing for other people right? That as I'm showing up for others, I now have value and worth. Or, you know, as, as a mother might not have a great relationship with her, her father or her husband. This wasn't the case for me. But if, if the husband is kind of absent or emotionally absent, she connects more to her children. And she's then sharing with her children, oh, your, your dad just doesn't get it. And, and you're so wonderful. And you're so you're this and my, my, darling little boy and all of a sudden you know a lot of who you are is based on how your mother sees you so the the wounds that come up for us with with a mother wound or a father wound come up around the the way that we were parented if we were either given too much love or too much expectation or not enough that creates misalignments inside of us that we then take into future relationships as we then take into our personalities and it's usually around 40 years old that we think like why am I this way <laughs> why why am I doing these things why am I showing up this way in a relationship and you start to think about and hopefully someone directs you into how were you raised how did your parents show up for you and like so many times and you did this for me Jeff like as we were talking about it and like lights are going off I'm like oh my gosh yeah I was never going to be enough for my father. So I had to just keep doing more and more and more. Again, not me, just a generic example. Or, you know, my mother, I was so perfect in her eyes, I could never make a single mistake. So I had to do everything perfectly so I could be worthy of love. These are the wounds that come through the way that we were raised because we're so impressionable in those young years. Um, for myself, I probably actually have more of a father wound with my mother. <laughs> because of the, the, the nature of their relationship and my mom being more of the, the control and the structure um, in the way that we were raised. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've, I've done that work and I've, I've gone through a lot of those things and I harbored some resentment to my, towards my parents for a while. I've, I've released that and I can, you know, forgive them and see that they, they were showing up in their own imperfection, but they loved me and they did their very best. And so I can, I can now make adjustments in my, my life to be a better father and to not take those projections and those conditionings that I had into different relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm hearing, I'm hearing so many people right now going, oh no, oh no. How am I showing up as a parent? Um, <laughs> because you can't love them too much. And if you don't give them enough love and it's it, what it makes me think of is everybody just take a deep breath. It is the beauty of the human journey and it's beautiful. It's messy. It's painful, but life is a classroom and we are all here to learn. And none of us, none of us are going to be the perfect parent. And it's not about, it's not about being perfect. You know, we are all going to mess up because listening to you, I'm like, yes, yes. I'm thinking about like my parents and my own childhood. And then also I'm thinking about my, my motherhood and all of my clients that that's, you, you know, we hold so much guilt as a parent to try to do it right. And so listening to that and thinking, you know, oh, how am I not going to mess up my kids? Well, we are here to do the best we can. Like you said, your parents did the best they could. And it's, it's all beautiful and it's meant to happen. You know, I have, 
two older children that have left the nest. And I've had these conversations with them of like them sitting in front of me and saying, mom, you did this and it hurt me. And I have to go, I, I have a choice at that point. I, I say that every parent's at a crossroads at that point and they can handle it one of two ways. They can go, no, 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 it, it was really this way or they can defend and they can, not, they can see it the way they, they saw it and they want the child to see it that way. Or they can go, I see that, honey, I'm sorry. Okay, how can I make it better? And they can actually listen to their child um, their adult child at that point, right? But we're all going to to drop the ball. We're all going to uh, not be perfectly balanced in the middle. Give our children just the right exact, you know, everything that they need. There's something else that you mentioned before um, when we were talking about what I loved so much. Going back to you talking about doing your men's group, okay? And when you said that you showed up and were the only one, to me, Joe, that tells me that you, your intention and what your group is about is not rooted in ego because you kept going. You were like, it's okay. Maybe somebody will come the next time. And the next time someone showed up and two showed up and then 60 showed up to me, your heart is really in it for the right reason. And that's so beautiful to me to hear that. Because if it was about ego, you would have been like, oh, this is embarrassing. I'm not doing this again. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, first I will say just in, in referencing what you said before, I am so great. It used to bother me when people would say I'm grateful for my trials or I'm grateful for my, you know, hard times. Like, what the heck are you talking about? But I am so grateful that my parents didn't do it perfectly. And I've been able to grow and evolve and actually get closer to them and see them with more compassion and love. And I apologize to my kids all the time, constantly. I, I mess up, you know, dad showed up in a really bad mood today and I brought that and I was angry with you and you didn't deserve that, that wasn't you. And so like, how do we do it perfectly? We don't, but we apologize really fast. Mm. Um, and it was in, in one of those men's groups that I really was able to flesh that out and, and learn more about that from other fathers that have been doing it even longer than me. Um, in, in referencing the men's group, you know, I, I'm developing some different things that will be more coaching and, and more of like an official structure. But this men's group was really important to me that we will never ever charge money for this for this group for people to come attend um it's been amazing how many men as i've called them on the phone after you know they come to a group and i just check in and we talk and I say, all right well i'll see you later and they well like where's the pitch you know like what what is it that you want to sell me right mm -hmm. and they're astounded. They don't know how to process it. They're really, we just want to like get together and care for each other and support each other and love each other. And that's all. And there are people with amazing gifts and talents that need to be and deserve to be compensated for those gifts and talents. And there needs to be a place where you can go and just be you and be safe to be that without you needing to show up with with money or you know these different ways to, to compensate people for that so yeah I've, i'm grateful that there were times when no one showed up because i had to ask myself why i was showing up why i was still going why i was still there and then the months when there were like one or two guys i've had some really beautiful intimate conversations that could only really happen between two or three people um and it felt really great to have 60, you know, nearly 60 men there at this last event. And that presented its own challenges and its own benefits. And we still didn't charge anything. And I, I never will. Um, because to your point, there, there are things that we need to do to provide for ourselves and provide for our families. And, and then there are other things that we just get to do 
because we love and there's going to be crossover between those things but for me it's really important that men have a space that they get to just come be yeah as as you're saying this i'm thinking of literally of, of a list of people in my mind where i'm like oh my gosh they need i need to invite them to your your events when's the next one do you know so yeah. may may 10th in utah county um I, I created an Instagram page called Utah Men's Circle. Okay. And there's a Facebook page called Utah Men's Circle. And that's that's really the whole point is just to announce mm -hmm. anything happening. Like if, if other people are doing the similar stuff, like go throw it on there. That's the nice thing about not charging is if someone else comes in and starts doing it too, you're not taking something away from me. You're you're building on it, right? Mm -hmm. And let's let's announce your thing too. But yeah, Utah Men's Circle is where we announce them. Our next one's going to be May 10th in Utah County. Um, two weeks after that, we'll have another one in Salt Lake County. Two weeks after that, we'll have another one in Davis County. And we just kind of go back and forth uh, to give different men opportunities to, to attend. Good, good. How young would you say for, for people to come? So we, for the sake of this group, I, I've said like, 18 or older okay. um, my son is 17 and you know there there is a need and there are people that are doing things specifically with young men and I'm excited for that and, and there to support that we had a, a 19 year old at our last group that he got up and started talking and oh my gosh it was amazing mm. to hear this young 19 year old really just embody this this passion and this power and this love for other men. And I was, I was briefly jealous. I, I wish that his age, I would have been in that place and able to, to speak to some of those things. Um, you know, as you said, it all happens as, as it should, but I was, I was just, and more than that, I'm just happy and celebrate him. So yeah, we, we stop it at 18 for now, but we have men up to 70, 75 years old. We, we need the whole range there. Man, I should have my 90-year-old father there. <laughs> he definitely has some stuff that he could he could talk about. Um, but you know, it's interesting because on the flip side of this, uh, women also have their father wounds, right? Their father wounds and their mother wounds. Um, but I remember I, I studied under my feng shui master. She she's her name's Tina Falk and she was such a profound part of my healing and I remember her looking at me as we were you know in it on my journey of 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 healing and she said how is your dad like or how is Danny my my husband how is he like your father and I was like nothing they're nothing alike and she just sat there and looked at me just quiet just kind of like try again Jen and I went oh wow yeah like I was I was looking at like how do they look and you know like just the surface things but then of course thinking about on a deeper level and so if we really sit and think about our spouse we find I believe we find an intimate partner to come together to heal to heal those parts within us that that need to be healed and and so if we are able to look at and ask that question you know i don't know do, does your have you thought about that with your wife and how she resembles your not physically your mom but have you thought about of that that with your mom yeah i've you know, with, with my wife and also with, uh, again, having like a mother wound with my father, I actually think that my, my wife and my father have some very similar uh, okay. traits. I see. Okay. And so, um, yeah, I have identified some of those things and if, it, it's all awareness, mm -hmm. right? Like everything we're talking about the thing that allows us to heal, the thing that allows us to grow, the thing that allows us to make changes is to be aware. And so, you know, back to our very first thing, 
sitting just to stop and think about those things. Like your, your coach that you were training with, you had never stopped, obviously, to, to stop and think about that. And because she didn't immediately give you a way out, you dove a little deeper and you identified things. And then, you know, for better or worse, that made you more aware and allowed you to then do more in your communication with Danny and in maybe how you're showing up for him or how you need him to show up for you, you know, as you release maybe expectations around your father or that wound that you might've had mm -hmm. um, the relationship better. Yeah. I know, I know for many years, he was paying for a lot of stuff that I had had with my father. And it, and the, the beautiful thing is literally two of my favorite people on the planet are my father and my husband. And so even though I, I had a lot of work to do and a lot of stuff from my childhood, my father is one of my favorite people and I understand him. I really do now. I didn't for a, re a really long time, but, you know, going back to what, what we can do, I'm going to give a little, a little perspective for um, wives with their husbands. One thing I've really noticed with, with my husband is he can show up and he can be in a, a mood. Like <laughs> he can be, I call it a bear. Okay. That's a nicer way to say they're being, you know, ornery, right? He, he shows up as a bear and many times all he needs, all he needs is for me to go over and like for me to see past, like that it's not about me. What has, and, and go, okay, he must've had a day, right? And to not be like, oh my gosh, what, what's your problem? And then just poking the bear and making it worse. I just go over and because I've done my own work. And so it's not about me anymore so much. I mean, I do have those moments, believe me, where I, I poke him and I'm mad or I get upset. I mean, I'm human still. And I, I'm definitely not a perfect wife, but I have learned a very, very simple, simple thing is to see past the anger or the mood and just go around, just go up to him and just put my arms around him. That's all it takes. Put my arms around him and say, hi, honey and give him a kiss. And it's like, he all of a sudden is like, oh, okay, I'm home because I'm his home. And I allow that to be, I allow myself to be his home and to be like, I see you. I know who you really are. And I know that, you know, you must've gone, you must've, you know, slayed some stuff out there and now you're home. Okay. And, and it's interesting to me how I can literally such a simple thing. I can see it could have been a night of us fighting all night long. Honestly, I could have chosen that, or it could be just where I go and I simply put my arms around him and I give him a hug and he, I feel his, I feel his walls come down and his bad mood literally dissipates. And I know it's not always going to be that simple, but it's such a simple thing that I, I want people to try it, really try it. If you, if your spouse, it could be your wife also walks in, in an ornery mood, instead of, you know, being like, geez, what's your problem? Or what, you know, what's, what's your deal or fighting with them, just go and simply look them in the eyes. Eye connection is a really big deal these days too. Not these days, but we, it's always a big deal, but we don't give enough eye contact, you know, and look him in the eyes and wrap your, your arms around him and just give him a kiss or say something kind and see how their mood shifts. Simple. Yeah. Simple. I, you know, what's, what's been interesting in, in doing so many different events and being in so many different circles and, and gatherings with different men is, of course, there is no one size fits all uh, solution. But what I've witnessed is when I show up in love, not in my ego, like, why is, why is she so honoring? You know what? And that's not fair to me that, that she's like, I, I had a hard day too. You know, um, if I can really show up in love and compassion and empathy, whatever the answer is becomes much more clear. I know Danny also does jujitsu. Mm -hmm. And so 
but he needs us to go like somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know what? You you make a good point because um because when you were saying, you know, finding a group of men, I didn't even think about this. Thank you for saying that, Joe, because I I was thinking, oh man, I wonder if I should like encourage Danny. But guess what? They they do that on the mats and the guys afterwards, they sit and they talk after they have just, you know, worked it out and they're literally like sweating and, um, and then they, they talk about their families and they have deep connection. And he's, he's invited me to come and be a part of jujitsu, but there's a part of me that just knows that's his space. And I don't, I, I don't, I want him to have that. I want it to just be his, you know? And so I see some of these other wives going and like, you know, doing the thing. And I'm like, Oh, should I do that more? And then I'm like, no, I gotta, I gotta let that just be his space. So I'm glad you just pointed that out for me. You're right. Sometimes he just needs to go beat someone up. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, True. I, it goes back to like, clearly you operate from a place of love and and you're you're not perfect you're going to have your own challenges but as you do that you you've given thought to these things and so to the other you know wives and, and mothers and, and women that that you coach with and that you speak to the same thing i think go back and and identify like where is my need you know for my husband to be a certain way where is that coming from and is it motivated is it coming from love for him and if it is and you really take some time to stop and think about it you know when he needs a hug mm -hmm. you know 20 minutes of probably just no one to talk to him yeah you know go do jujitsu yep. you know what like to go just like watch tv and eat a really good whatever it might be yep. um yep. and so that's that to me is the challenge for for men and women for the masculine and feminine is just to raise our level of awareness. And when we're operating from a place of love, uh, God, everything gets better. Yeah, yeah, amen to that, amen. Okay, Joe, so how can people find you? I know you mentioned your, um, you mentioned your, your group. Is there anything else that, any other websites or any other way, anything else you wanna mention? Um, you know, if, if people wanted to connect with me specifically, my, my Instagram handle is just my name, Joe Spearden. Um, if they wanted to know more about this larger group that I'm a part of called Sacred Sons, uh, they have a website as well, just Sacred Sons, or, or an Instagram as well. And I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here for those conversations, for that connection. And if they want to, you know, come be a part of the men's circle, if they're, you know, have some trepidation around it, like, let's talk. I'll get on a phone call with husband or brother or son what's what's really been interesting for me over the past six months is six months ago I would get 10 women per week that would reach out to me and say my husband really needs this or my son really needs this or my brother really needs this and what has been so amazing and so wonderful to see in the past three to four months is how many men are coming to me and saying I really need this mm. Um, because as, as much as I might want something for you, you have to want it to, you have to be willing to go do it scared, do yeah. it anyway. Right. And, uh, it's been miraculous to see men soften into themselves and really like embody the, the power that they are as they connect in. And as they're vulnerable, vulnerability is a superpower. Authenticity being sensitive to your emotions it, it, it's the closest thing there is to being a superhero and seeing men embrace that and embody that is is so rewarding to me it's so cool to see yes okay one last question for you what is your message to the world it's time to evolve it's time to be more and that doesn't mean you're not enough you are and if you look back over everything that you've fought through and you've accomplished to what you are right now your evolution has been amazing i believe right now in the world we have an opportunity for exponential growth 
And that will come as you lift where you stand. Your community, your family, your tribe, your people, focus there. And as you do that from a place of love, the evolution of, of you and those around you is, is astounding and so satisfying. That's what I believe we're being called to. That's what I believe we're being called into right now. Yes, so beautiful. Love that. Thank you so much for being here today, Joe. I appreciate you so much. And I'm so grateful for the work you're doing. It's so needed, so needed. You're amazing. Thank you, Joe. Yes. It's, it's here right, right back to doing everything that you continue to do. And I'm so grateful to the role that you did play and continue to play in, in my own progression and evolution. And I'm, I'm grateful that, that you show up in those ways. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for being a part of this very important conversation. We're going to have more. So stay tuned because uh, I'm sure, I'm sure Joe, you and I can, we're going to have, we're going to do work together. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. And so um, thank you for being a part of this. Have a fabulous week and bye for now.